Hi, this is Simon Upstell and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I'm going to show you a technique for creating liquid glass. Now, I know that everyone has extremely strong views as to exactly how liquid glass should look, but hopefully this tutorial will give you enough of a range of techniques that you'll be able to craft your own absolutely perfect version. So let's take a look. OK, so for this project, let's go with 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second and a duration of nine seconds. And the first thing I want to do is actually to set up the project structure. This seems like a very boring way to start, but I promise you it's going to save you heartache if you do it this way. So I'm going to rename this group as BG for background. I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to call this group glass. I'm going to make a new group and call it shine. I'm going to make another new group and I'm going to call it prism. Another group, call it displace one. Duplicate that group because we want to call this one displace two. And the final group that we're going to make is going to be called master shape. OK, having done all that, I'm going to select my background group. I'm going to come to import, import media navigate to my assets folder and I'm just going to bring in both of these assets. I will give you a link to both of those import. So we've got this lake image and we've also got this thing called matte asset and I'm going to drag that into the master shape group and you'll see that this is this sort of blobby reveal like that. I'm not going to show you how I made that here, but if you want to know more about this technique, check out my blur scale tutorial linked to in the description. Now it's only 30 frames long, so let's come over to timing and let's set the end condition to hold. Let's come to the last frame and with the mat asset selected, let's come to mark and mark out. And this is going to give us a hold on the end of it. So we can turn off this master shape group and then we want to add another couple of groups inside this glass group. So I'm going to add another group. I'm going to call this one refraction, drop it into that glass group down there. And I'm going to make one more new group, call this image. And I'm going to drop that into the refraction group. So the glass group has got a sort of a nest of groups within it. So into this image group, I'm going to drop a clone of the background. So background, make clone layer. Annoyingly, that makes a new group. We don't want that. Just going to drag the clone into the image group and delete that group that it made there. I'm just going to temporarily turn off the background group so you can see what I'm doing with this glass group. So I want to add to it an image mask and I'm going to use my master shape as the source. And now you can see that that is revealing inside of the glass, as it were. We also want to just adjust the scale of this mat. And I'm going to do that by coming to filters and stylize and min max, switch to maximum and we'll set the radius to seven. You can see that just expands it out just a little bit. Then I'm going to make a clone of my master shape. Right click, make clone layer. And I'm going to drag that down into the refraction group just above the image, just there. And we can delete that group that it's made there. So let's call this edge, this clone that we've added in here. Let's come over and give it border and stroke. We want to set the color to white. We want to set the width to 20 and the position to centered. And I'm just going to fade the inside by 50%. Also going to set that threshold to zero. Oh, and the other thing I need to do is to hide source. Then I'm going to come to filters and blur and Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to set that amount to eight. I also want to come over to properties and I want to open up the scale, reduce the X scale to 90%. Then let's come and work on our displace groups. So come to the library, generators, color solid, drag that in, inspector, Let's use the HSB sliders, zero saturation, brightness of 30%. So dark gray like that. And we can copy that color solid into displace two by holding down the option key and dragging it like that. 
So we don't actually need to see either of these groups. What we're actually going to do is again, we're going to be using a clone of the master shape. So right click, make clone layer on the master shape. Let's drag that into displace one above the color solid. And let's delete that group that it's made there. And then to the displace one group, we want to add filters blur and Gaussian blur. And let's set the amounts to eight. Let's copy that clone into the displace two. So option dragging it above that color solid. And this time we want to add to it another stroke. So border stroke. We will again switch the color to white. We will set the width to 40, position to inside, and we will hide source. And then I want to add a Gaussian blur. So filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's have 64 for the amount. OK, so it's all a little bit of a mystery so far, but it's now going to start to become much clearer. What we're going to do is we're going to select our refraction group. We're going to come to filters and distortion and refraction. And we're going to use displace one as the source. And we're going to set the softness all the way up to one and the refraction all the way up to 200. You can already see the glassy effect that's had on the edges there. And then we're going to duplicate this refraction. So right click duplicate. This time we want to use displace two as the refraction source. And I want to turn that refraction down to 150. I'm just going to turn back on my background group. So then if we play from the beginning, you'll see we get this nice sort of glassy reveal. So lots more work to do though. Let's first of all, clone this glass group. So right click, make clone layer. Again, it makes a new group, which we don't want. We're going to drag this clone into the shine group and delete this group that it made. To this clone, we are going to add color and threshold. And what this is going to do is pick out all the highlights. So I'm just going to set the threshold to 0.4 and the smoothness to 0 0.05. I'll set the blend mode of the shine group to add. So you can see that that's really kicked through the highlights like that. So I don't really want the highlights too much in the central area. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to mask it. So first of all, let's add an image mask and use our master shape as the source. So what we want to do with this image mask is actually to invert it. And then we're going to add to it filters blur and Gaussian blur. We're going to set the amount to something like 256. We're going to come over to filters and color levels. We're going to select alpha and we're going to do something like this. So you see the white value is pushing it away from the center like that. So I think that's a little bit better. So if we now look at that, obviously with glass, we need extremely bright specular highlights. And I think that that helps us there. So jumping around here, let's just come back down into our refraction group. Let's select the edge because just above that, I want to make some text. So I'm going to select my text tool. I'm going to type my text. I'm going to center align it, make it nice and big. Properties, reset, adjust the baseline till we're nicely centered up. Then if we look at the results, we can see we've got the text being deformed by the refraction as well. Now, if we feel that our background is getting in the way of the effect too much, we can come back down into this image group, select our clone layer and come to color and levels. And we can adjust, adjust the white value. You can see we're losing some of that shine as we do so, but, but that's probably desirable. So there we go. We've got a sort of more manageable result. You'll want to adjust this value depending on the, the nature of the background. Let's add some more detail. I'm going to close down some of these groups while we work. Let's come to the prism group. Let's come to the library generators and drag in a gradient. Come over to the inspector. Let's set up the start and end values for Y. So positive 540 for the start, negative 540 for the end. From the gradient menu, let's select a rainbow and let us also come to filters and distortion and underwater. Let's first of all, turn on repeat edges. We want a size of, I think, 1.25, speed of 0 0.08, 
and a refraction of 500. So that's going to give us this sort of undulating iridescence. And then what we can do is we can add this over the top. So select our prism group and come to properties, blend mode. Let's select color dodge and set it to 15%. So obviously it's going all over the place Then we don't want that. So we'd have to do some more cunning masking. So first of all, Let's just right click and add an image mask and let's just use the master shape. So that's masked it off from the rest of the background. So then let's duplicate that mask, right click and duplicate. Let's set the mask blend mode to subtract. Let's first of all add filters, stylize and uh, min max. Let's set the radius to 24 and let's add blur and Gaussian blur and let's set that amount to 64. So now it's really just on the edges and it's giving us this continuously moving shimmering iridescence. Let's close that down. So talking of movement, we need to think a little bit more about keeping the glass looking alive. So one of the things we can do is come into our glass group and open it all up and come to the edge, come to properties and position, open that up, Select the X position, add parameter behavior and ramp. Let's have a start value of a negative eight, an end value of eight. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of extra sort of movement on the shine, as you can see. And another thing that will really help is if we come back to our background group, I'm gonna set it to fixed resolution. I'm gonna take my lake image and I'm just going to increase its scale because it's only 1920 and I want to move it a little bit. So I'm going to go for 110 on the scale. And then I'm going to come to the first frame. I'm going to keyframe the Y position. I'm going to come to frame 30 and set that value to 50. Come forward to say 130, set that value to negative 50 and come to the end and set it back to zero. Just going to open up the keyframe editor, command A to select all the points and then let's just right click and ease both and it will ease all of those just like that. Okay, so then let's take a look at that and hopefully you can see that that background moving really helps to sell that refraction effect because we're seeing all that sort of differential motion and that sort of distortion as well. So the other thing I want to experiment with is coming back to my glass group and my image and my clone layer here and I'm going to add filters and distortion and bulge. Now I'm just going to turn on the overlays just to position this and I want to position it just down here on that bottom edge there. I'm going to set the amount to 960 and what that's going to do is just displace that center quite a bit more but I'm also just going to set the scale to something like 0.75. So you may or may not decide you like that, but I think it just does help to make it a, a, quite a bit more glassy for me anyway. And one more thing I want to do, I think, is to select my liquid glass text, come to its Y position and add parameter behavior and overshoot. And I want to set the start value to something like negative 240 and the end offset to something like 150. And then if we run it, I think just that little bit of extra movement helps with the overall liquid feel. So I might have missed something, but I think we're pretty much done. Uh, I just want to point out that we can swap out our background. So I'm just going to overwrite it with this image here and you can see how it's all working with this different background. Pretty nice in this case, I think. So we could try a different image. She's too big, but we could scale her down like this. This looks pretty nice as well. And as I mentioned, we can always come into this glass group and the levels that we applied to the clone there, we can adjust that to taste. So, you know, that's obviously too bright if without the levels, but we can just dial that down so it's sort of sympathetic with the shot here. And probably sort of quite a low value is actually starting to look quite nice here. And I should just point out that if you want a simpler look, you could come to the edge layer and just turn that off. And then you've got a simpler looking glass bubble. It's entirely up to you. I make no judgments about your character if you prefer one or the other.
And, of course, if you want to completely defeat the object of it being glass, then you'll want to blur the image behind the shape. So to do that, you would take your image, you would make a clone layer. We would need to mask this, so add image mask. We do need to use our master shape. So then we could take our clone layer and we could come to filters, blur and Gaussian blur, turn on crop, set the amount to whatever it wanted, so 128, and we've got this ridiculous sort of shadow look. But I think it's a shame to have lost all those nice specular details on the edges. So what I would suggest we do is to take our image mask, come to filters, stylize and min max. I would set the radius to something like 50 and then I would add another blur, Gaussian blur, set the amount to something like 64. And what that does is it just keeps that really nice refractive look on the edges, but we've got that blurring in the middle. And that can be adjusted to taste with these various controls here. So if you wanted even more blurring out towards the edges, you could reduce that min-max amount. It's a real shame, I think, to be doing that if you've gone to all that trouble to actually try and make it look glassy in the first place. But, you know, it's entirely up to your personal taste. Again, I won't judge you. So I hope that's given you lots of ideas. There's no one correct way of doing this. So it's really just about finding the look that you prefer. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.